we have to deal with the latest developments surrounding the release of two upcoming books that are causing quite a stir. Dear viewers, welcome to our channel. Meanwhile, the former royals' memoirs hit the shelves as they are, but our absolute legend, Mike Tyndall, is there. The book's good and bad scum and Ruby's unpublished friends, this time it's no coincidence. What makes this situation especially delicious is the stark contrast between this situation and the approach to royal life. Today's headline is the way Mike speaks particularly revealing language about the Duchess of Cambridge. Tyndall praised the royal couple's down-to-earth nature. They came across as down-to-earth, taken seriously, and entertaining and knowledgeable in their attitude. Not because I thought they were boring, but because I thought they were boring. They were four more insightful people than I expected. You can see how carefully everything related to the royal family is managed. It also talks about the love between the two that runs through the family. They take an interest in sports with genuine respect and affection. There are no intrigues. This is how a real family behaves. No revealing allegations, just warmth and respect. His heartwarming anecdotes about Wales' family show how he made meaningful connections without advertising every detail to the world. The timing of these publications has caused great social interest, and it is very interesting to observe these different approaches. The king's nephew once made a cheeky joke about the duke's departure from the royal family, which was not well received. He also got into a bit of trouble when he appeared on a live version of A Question of Sport. Mike told a story about a party after the 2003 World Cup final, when he and Ian Balshaw pretended to beat Prince Harry and joked that the royal family had won. He really wanted to enlighten himself. Haskell adds that the joke might have been popular among Raiders if Prince Harry and Meghan Markle biographer Ahmed Scobie had not defended the Duke online. Upsetting Sex Fans Another area of contrast is that while some seem to be constantly clashing with the press while seeking attention, Mike shows how to handle media attention with grace and good humor, but he doesn't want this Pudo Leitner and is still running from it. He is just getting on with his life, understanding that the public interest is part of it. When things are taken out of the realm of what they should be, all the context, irony and humor is lost. Elsewhere in the book, Tyndall reveals about the late Queen Elizabeth, that she was really like a closed door. Her life was like an episode of Downton Abbey, meals were at long tables, everyone was dressed fine every night. And the Tsar Mike was watching the horse races on TV with her, and I'm sure many of you reading this have done that with your grandchildren. There is a wonderful photograph of my daughter Mia sitting with Prince Edinburgh, it captures exactly what it was like that afternoon. He writes about very close family members who love each other deeply and spend precious time together. Yes, there is a lot of drama surrounding the royal family, but they are not so different from anyone else. Essentially Mike has seamlessly integrated into the family. Most importantly, he has proven that it is entirely possible to be yourself while still respecting royal protocol and tradition. Maintaining his own identity while respecting tradition. This is completely devastating for the brand and brand of sex. This is why Mike T's book completely dismantles the narrative of the royal family as being unapproachable. Could anyone argue that it is impossible to join the royal family when a former rugby player with no drama has become a popular member? How could anyone argue that the royal institution is rigid and unapproachable? Mike's experience shows the exact opposite. It's like a master class on how to properly handle royal communication. The contrast between these two approaches to royal life couldn't be greater.